Yes, guys, you're welcome. This lesson, uh, we are continuing, and this is our second lesson of complex numbers. And today, we're going to look at the Agand diagram. Like the way you plot other graphs, okay, we are going to find that uh, an Agand diagram is a plot that shows a complex number. So this is the graphical representation of a complex number. Remember in the Cartesian plane, we have got an axis X axis, and we've also gotten our Y axis. That is in the Cartesian plane. But if we talk about the Agand diagram, our X axis in this case, we refer it to, to as real axis, while the Y axis we refer to it as imaginary axis. Now, uh, the complex plane is similar to a Cartesian plane, only that the axis, the naming of the axis is different. Now, uh, this diagram was invented by uh, someone. Uh, he was um, called Junior Agan in 1806. Okay, so in other words, if you have a complex number Z is equals to X plus IY, to represent this complex number, we draw, we draw it uh, as if it is like a vector, okay? So each complex number is represented by a line of a certain length in a particular direction. Thus, uh, the complex number is shown as a vector on the Agan diagram. Now, if you have Z is X plus IY, uh, I, can, I can have this. This is my imaginary axis. And this is my real axis. So uh, then I will plot, maybe here is a value X and maybe here is a certain value Y. So a plot of X, uh, the first one is X, then I, Y, so it is here. So what you do, you represent it with a certain, with a line, but this line should be showing a certain direction. And we show that direction using an arrow. So the representation of a complex number uh, is a line with an arrow on the head to show the direction, okay? So uh, this is what we call the Agandhi diagram. So here, of course, where this point is X and this point is Y, this one represents our complexity rather our Agand diagram. So meaning if you're given any values to be plotted on the complex plane, uh, you can really find it very easy for you to plot. For example, if we are to just uh, look at briefly, if you have something like Z1 is equals to three uh, plus four I, Z2 is equals to negative two plus I, Z3 is equal to maybe negative five minus four I. Z4 is equal to two minus three I. Z5 is equal to negative four minus two I. If we are to represent all these complex numbers on the Agan diagram, uh, let me show you how you'd do it easily. If we had to put all of them, on a complex plane. So here uh, we shall have zero, one, two, three, four, one, two, uh, three, four. So we are having this one, two, three, four. And this is my real axis. This is my imaginary axis. One, two, three, four, five, maybe. One, two, three, four, five, maybe. So I'm having one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, negative. So if we are to represent each, you just plot normally. Here you have three plus four. So we have three on the real and four on the imaginary. So four on the imaginary. So we are having this so that complex number will be represented as this. And you call that one Z1. Uh, you have negative two plus I. So we shall have negative two on the real axis 
uh, plus i. So i is positive one. So you're having this. So this is my z2. It must be a straight line with a headed arrow. So z2. z3, negative five minus four i. This is my negative five minus four i. We are coming this side. So you'll have it drawn as this. So this is z3. Then if you have negative, uh, two minus three, you have two, then minus three. So it is this, two minus three, you have this. And then with, an, with a headed arrow, this is z4. Then z5, negative four minus two, negative four minus two, we are here. So you draw that straight line, and then this is your Z5. So even if they give you something where they want you to, to plot, okay, where they want you to plot like uh, Z1 plus Z2, you can first work on Z1 plus Z2, then you later plot it on the plane. For example, if in this case, I wanted you to put Z1 plus Z2 on the plane, you cannot just plot it anyhow, but instead you would just first calculate it out and you see. So this is this would be the same as Z1 is 3 plus 4i, then plus Z2, negative 2 plus i. So when you get 3 minus 2, you get 1, 4i plus i, you get 5i. So when you plot this, you have 1 on the, on the real and you have 5 on the imaginary. So it would be this. So this would be, you plot it very well, you put a added arrow and you said this is Z1 plus Z2. So whatever, you need to first work on it and then you do the need for it. What if it was Z maybe two minus Z5? If they want you to plot this, first work it out, Z2, which is negative two plus I. Then when you're subtracting, use brackets. So minus four, then minus two I. So when you open the brackets, it will be negative two plus I, then plus four then plus two i. So when you add this, it will be negative two plus four, which will be two, then i plus two i, that is three i. So z2 minus z5 is the same as two plus three i. For knowing, if you want to know how I add or how I subtract, we visit our first lesson where we looked at the algebra of complex numbers. So two plus three i, two is on the real, three i is on the imaginary. So I'm here. So you draw the line with the headed arrow and you put Z2 minus Z5. So this is what we call a complex number plane or the Agand diagram. This one now takes us to another concept. It takes us to another, it takes us to another concept. And this concept we are going for is what we call modulus of a complex number. So let's look at modulus of a complex number. Modulus, modulus of a complex number. Uh, when we say modulus of a complex number, the word modulus can mean length, the word modulus can mean magnitude. So when we say modulus of a complex number and you have a complex number says Z is equals to X plus I, Y, then it means that the modulus of Z is denoted by Z magnitude and that is equal to the square root of X squared plus Y squared. Don't look at the I, the magnitude or the modulus is Z magnitude equaling to X squared plus Y squared. For example, for example, uh, if we are given Z as one plus root three I, and we want to find the magnitude of Z. If you had to find the magnitude of Z or the modulus of Z, uh, simply this uh, would mean that our Z is, one plus root three, I can say then I. So if I need the magnitude of Z, 
the magnitude of z would be equal to the square root of one squared plus uh, root three, then squared, discard the i. So this is the same as the square root of one plus three, which is four, and this gives us a two. So the modulus in that case gives us two. Another case, another point would, or another example would be find z magnitude if z is equal to negative a half minus root three out of two i. So if you're having this and they want the magnitude of z, simply tell me that z magnitude is equal to uh, the square root of negative a half squared then plus negative root three out of two then squared. So this is a quarter plus when you square root three, you get three. When you square two, you get four. So we are taking uh, the square root of one, which is one. Because this is four over four, which is one, square root of four, but the square root of one is one. So this is how really we can move on. Then uh, another part, Another, another example would be if z is equals to negative three plus four i, find z magnitude. So if you had find z magnitude of this, it will be, the solution would be z magnitude is equal to the square root. If you have negative three, come with that negative three. And then square then plus four squared. So this would be the square root uh, It would be the square root of nine, negative three, that is nine plus 16, which gives the square root of 25, which gives five. So that is how we get the modulus, as simple as that, as simple as that. Um, Well, then from there, after having known what the modulus is equal to, uh, let's simplify the properties of modulus. I told you the topic is called complex numbers, but when you're doing the numbers, they become the simplest numbers. So in other words, the topic has never, been what you think. <laughs> the topic is the easiest here, okay? The topic is the easiest. Now, we are talking about the properties of the modulus. Um, Uh, the first property, I'm just giving a, 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 a summarized form of these properties. So if we have Z1 and Z2 as complex numbers, if they are complex numbers, then it would mean that Z1, Z2 magnitude, is the same as the magnitude of Z1 times the magnitude of Z2. And another one, if you have magnitude of Z1 over Z2, this is the same as magnitude of Z1 over magnitude of Z2. As simple as this. 
as simple as this. For example, let me give you an example. Let me give you examples on this. For example, example one. Z1 is equals to five minus 12 of I. Z2 is equals to three minus four I. Find magnitude of Z1, Z2, and magnitude of Z1 out of Z2. Now, for this case, uh, for this case, you can do the following. You can attempt this question using the alternatives that I'm going to outline for you here. So if we are to get Z1 and Z2, Z1, Z2, um, we, we are given Z1 as, five minus 12 of i, and we are given z2 as three minus four i, okay? So we've already said that z1, z2 is the same as z1 alone times z2 alone. So this is the same as magnitude of z1, which is five minus 12 of i, times magnitude of Z2, which is a three minus four I. So you can do this separately. And this is the same as the square root of five squared plus the square root of negative 12 squared, then times the square root of three squared plus the square root of negative four, rather the square of negative four squared. So this is the same as, um, 144 plus 25, that is 169 times the square root of nine plus 16, that is 25. So this is 13 times the square root of 25, that is five. And this one will give you 65. One can do it like that. Alternatively, alternatively, uh, you can first get Z1, Z2, because they want the magnitude of Z1, Z2. So you can first get Z1, Z2. And Z1, Z2 is the same as getting Z1, which is five minus 12 of I, times Z2, which is three minus four I. In the first lesson, I taught you algebra on how to expand this. So it is five times three, that is 15. Five times four I, that is negative 20 I, Negative 12 of i times six, that is minus 36 i. Then negative 12 of i times negative four i, it will be 48, but i and i, they make negative one. So we shall have a negative, negative 48. Okay, so this is the same as 15 minus 48, that is negative 33, minus 20 minus 36, that is minus 56i. So this is Z1, Z2, but they need its magnitude. So let me complete it from here. It means that you'll have Z1, Z2 magnitude as the square root of negative 33 squared plus negative 56 squared. All right, so uh, this one here will give you 65 units. Get this value and this value under root, you get 65 units. Even here you can put units because they just want the magnitude, but you don't know in which unit. So just put units as simple as that. Then 
Uh, let's go to Z1 over Z2 magnitude. Uh, for part two, remember our Z1 is still five minus 12 I and our Z2 is three minus four I. So the moment they say Z1 out of Z2 magnitude, this is the same as magnitude of Z1 out of magnitude of Z2. So this is the same as magnitude of Z1 is square root of five squared plus negative 12 squared over magnitude of Z2 is the same as the square root of three squared uh, plus negative four squared. And this one will give us, this is uh, the square root of 169 out of the square root of 25, which gives 13 out of five. To some students, this approach seems to be very hard to some, and therefore they prefer using this alternative of first getting Z1 out of Z2, which is the same as five minus 12 I, over three minus four I. And this is the same as we shall realize five minus 12 of I, we shall multiply by the conjugate of the denominator, which is three plus four I. Out of three minus four I times its conjugate, three plus four I. The process that we've done here is not called rationalization. Rationalization only applies to SADs, but in complex numbers, we do what we call realization. So when we expand this, this is going to be 15 uh, plus 20i uh, minus 36i. Then this is a 48, but negative. Then i squared is also negative. So it will be plus 48. Everything is out of 3 squared, which is 9 uh, plus 12i minus 12i, then this is the same as 4i squared. So it will bring us to have, uh, at the end of it all, it will bring us to get, um, this is 16, but negative. So it will be plus 16. So this one will cancel with this. So we shall get 15 plus 48, that is 63. 20i minus 36i, we shall get minus 16i out of 25. But we have to express it as real and imaginary. So it is going to be 63 over 25. Then minus 16i out of 25. You have gotten Z1 out of Z2. But the question is Z1 over Z2 magnitude. So let me commit from here. Z1 over Z2 magnitude would be the same as uh, the square root of 63 out of 25 squared plus negative 16 out of 25 squared and a root. So this is going to be, um, it is going to be, Try summarizing it out. Uh, you're going to get uh, the square root of 63 squared plus 16 squared out of 25 squared. And it will come up as 65 over 25, which is the same as 13 out of 5. So, both approaches give you the same answer. Both approaches give you the same answer. This one takes us, this one takes us to another uh, approach. And this approach where we are going we are going to look at the argument 
You're going to look at the argument of a complex number. After getting the argument of a complex number, then we look at the polar form of a complex number and we first hold it there because that one will be sending us to Demova's theorem. But let's look at how, this is how we deal with arguments, rather with the moduli. And now let's go to arguments. Argument. When we say argument, students look at that argument of noise. You've stolen this, you've stolen, no. This is argument of a complex number. We denote it, let's call it complex number Z. We denote it as ag Z. Ag Z. Argument of a complex number. Now, when we say argument of a complex number, it is defined as, when I talk about argument, it is defined as angle theta, we define it as angle theta, which the complex number Z makes with the positive X axis. So the argument in the complex numbers, the argument is simply the angle. So when we say argument of a complex number, it refers to that angle theta, okay? Which the complex number, which the complex number makes, with a complex number makes with the positive, with the positive X axis, or with the real axis, with the positive X axis or the real axis. For example, if I have such a complex number, uh, this is my Y axis or what you may call the imaginary, and this is the positive real axis or the X axis. So we are saying that the angle with which a complex number Z, this is my complex number Z. Okay, this is the complex number Z. So my Z is equals to X plus IY. So the angle, the complex number, the angle theta that the complex number makes with the positive X axis is what we call a call, uh, is what we call the argument. So from here up to here, I'm taking it to be my X. And from here up to here, I'm taking it to be my Y. So by looking at this diagram, you can really see that tan theta would be opposite over adjacent, but the opposite is Y, while my adjacent is X. So theta will be the tan inverse of y out of x. This one will always give us the argument. So the argument is that angle theta that we get. Now for a given complex number, there will be infinitely many possible values of the argument, any two of which will differ by the whole multiple of 360. So basically, um, uh, you say that, at, uh, uh, Theta is the argument of a complex number Z or the amplitude of Z. Now, for principal values from your trigonometry, for principal values, we shall be taking negative pi less or equal to argument of z less or equal to pi. We are going to see how we do get these values, but avoid the confusion. As I've told you that the moment you work it out, you'll find yourself with angles, with many sets of angles, but to avoid all that confusion, we usually work with the value of theta for which it must be between negative 180 degrees up to 180 degrees. As I've told you, that is to avoid the co avoid the confusion. To avoid confusion. So let's see 
how best we get these arguments. Let's see how best we get the arguments. Now, uh, before even I take you further, in practice or in summary, we've seen that the argument is the inverse of y over x, okay? Now, this one is often used to find a principal argument of a complex number Z, despite the fact that it may be two values of theta in the permitted range. The formula is necessarily not sufficient to help us, and therefore, with the aid of a sketch, we can get the most appropriate value. With the aid of a sketch, the formula is not enough to show you which complex number because you may get two values with a certain within the same range, but the nature of the sketch tells you which value is the most correct argument for a certain complex number. Examples. Examples. Find the principal argument for the following complex numbers. A, one plus I, B, negative one minus I root three, C, negative five, D, negative root three, plus I, E, root three minus I, then I'll do what I can. What I will leave, you'll do it. F negative three plus four I. We have clearly said that the sketch will be guiding us. Now, we've looked at how we plot the complex number on the Agan diagram. So that those Agan diagrams are going to be helping us know how we do it. So for part A, let me call it Z1. Eh? Z1 is equal to one plus I. First sketch it. Uh, if you sketch it, you have the real axis and you have the imaginary axis. Since it is one and one, I'm assuming that this is my one and this is also my one. So it comes here. So the complex number is this. So this is a theta, all right? And this is my Z1. Now, a theta is equal to tan inverse of one over one, because my Y is one and my X is one, so one over one. And theta is equals to 40. Theta is equals to 45. And because we say that this is the angle, that the complex number makes to the positive x axis, then that is it. If you want to convert it to radians, one may need to give me the answer in radians, okay? Which means that theta would be equaling to 45 pi out of 180, because you need to know that 180 is equals to pi. 180 degrees is equals to pi. So if I want theta converted to, to radians, I just say 45 pi out of 180. So this one will give me the answer as a quarter pi or pi over four. So the argument of Z1 is pi over four or 45 degrees. As simple as that. Then for part two, which is my B, I'm plotting negative one and negative root three, negative one and negative root three. So I'm letting it to be Z2, 
negative one minus i root three. So when you plot this, uh, this is my imaginary axis and this is my real axis. So I'm plotting negative one and negative root three. So it is here. Uh, so uh, the angle that it makes with the positive axis, okay, if this is angle theta, because here you'll get angle theta, okay? So if you get angle theta, but but we are saying that the angle it makes with the positive x-axis is the angle we are looking for. So this is the theta. So you have this option, you could theta one, and as well, you have this option. The angle it makes with the positive x-axis, this is theta two. Now, when you look at this point, of course, we need to first get our theta. We know that, uh, tan theta is i over y over x, but don't use it as negative. Bring it the way it is, positive. Just use it as a positive. So we shall have, uh, we shall have root three out of one, okay? So it means that theta is the tan inverse of root three out of one. So this is the same as theta is the same as 60 degrees. Okay. Now, since we are looking for the angle that it makes with the positive x-axis, so we are looking for theta one. So uh, z2 is equaling to theta one. How do we get theta one? How do you get this value? The value that it makes with the positive x, x axis. So we are going to have it as, if this is 60 theta, then what about this? It is negative 120. So uh, our axz2 is equals to negative 120. Just smart, just need to be very, very, very smart. Then for this part C, negative five, we have to plot negative five. So for that case, uh, negative 120, you can put it in radians also. You can put it in radians. You can just say, uh, Z2 is equaling to, it will be negative 120 pi over 180, which is going to give you negative two thirds pi to be negative two thirds by still you are there. Then what about negative five? If you have to look for the argument of negative five, just draw it because it has one part only, the part of real. So this is my real part and this is my imaginary part. So if I need negative five, uh, just this. So it means that the complex number Z3 is this, negative five, All right? So uh, if Z3, let me call it Z3 is equals to negative five plus zero I, because it doesn't have the I side, doesn't have the imaginary side. So uh, negative five plus zero I. Now, if this is the Z3, it means that uh, if I'm to get the argument, The argument of Z3, it will be the angle it makes with the positive x-axis. So, uh, of course, this is tan inverse. It is the tan inverse of Y, which is a zero over negative five, rather over five, sorry. We consider it is positive. So we shall take tan inverse of zero, which is 180. 180 is the same as pi. So the arg z3 is the same as 
i. And that is it. That is it. Then for z4, the fourth one was negative root three plus i. I'm going to call it z4 is equal to um, negative root three plus i. If you plot this, negative root three, we are here, negative root three. Then i, i is like one. So our complex number is this. When we plot it, you have to use a ruler and make sure that they tally very well. So here, uh, we are looking for this angle theta, but but of course you have to label your axis imaginary and this is the real axis. So we shall be looking for the angle from the positive X axis. Okay. So um, it would mean that our theta would be equal to tan inverse of y, which is one out of x, which is root three. This one gives us 30 degrees. It means that theta is 30 degrees, but from here up to here, it will be 180 minus 30, which will be six, uh, 150. So the argument of Z4 gives, 150 degrees, which you can convert to radians. Now you see how they sketch. The moment you draw the bad, the moment you draw a, a poor sketch, you get a wrong answer. Because some students use this as the argument, which is wrong. Because we have to look at that angle theta, the complex number makes with the positive x-axis. So if this was z4, ah, then it makes that angle with the positive x axis. So I would love that the rest, the other two, you do them and you see how it is. You do them and you see how it is. You do them and you see how it is. So from here, after having known how to get modulus argument, then now we go to the most crucial part of this area, and that is called the modulus argument form. Modulus argument form of a complex number. Because you have known how to get modulus, you've known how to get the argument. So what is the complex number then? Many books call it the polar form of a complex number. How do we get the polar form of a complex number? Well, Uh, for this case, if you are to get the modulus argument form of a complex number with respect to what we've so far looked at, it can be very easy for us. It can be very easy for us. Now, We've already seen that for a complex number that has been plotted on the Agand diagram, real axis, imaginary axis, a 
I've brought it complex number. This is y, this is x, and this is xy makes angle theta has modulus r. Now, if you consider complex number z, which is equals to x plus i y, making angle theta with a positive x axis, it means that the argument of z is equals to theta, right? Now, from this diagram, and from simple trigonometric polar, it means that we are going to trigonometric functions a bit. So cos theta, we're looking for cos theta, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it is going to be x out of r, and our sine theta is going to be y, because this is y, okay, out of r, opposite of hypotenuse, implying that uh, from here, our x is equals to r cos theta, and our y is equals to r sin theta. Right? But remember, z is equals to x plus i y. Z is x plus i y, implying that z will be equal to if I substitute for x and y, it will be r cos theta plus. Uh, I R sine theta. I've substituted for x and y into this equation. Then that by looking at this, R is common, factorize it out. So it is R into cos theta plus I sine theta. Where, where R is equals to the modulus of Z, which is equals to square root of X squared plus Y squared. So what I have derived here, is what we call the modulus argument form of a complex number. You need to first get the modulus, you get the argument, you substitute in this equation, and you get what we call the modulus argument form of a complex number. The modulus argument form of a complex number. Example. Examples. Express. The following complex numbers. In modulus argument form. I will do few still. A five plus five i root three. B root two plus i. C negative root three over two plus a half i. D negative three root two plus three root two i. E negative five i f negative five minus twelve of i. Ah, uh, I'll do this. I do this and this. The rest are yours. Now, looking at the first part, looking at the first part. I'm going to let my z1 to be equal to 5 plus 5i five root 3. First, get the value of r. r is equal to the modulus, which is the square root of 5 squared plus 5 root 3 squared. It's the same as 25 plus, this is 25 times three, that is 75. Call this square, first squares root three, it becomes three, then squares five also, it becomes 25. 25 times three, 75, which is the same as the square root of 100, which is 10. 
So I've gotten the modulus. Then sketch it and get the argument. So to get the argument here, we shall have five on Rio. This is imaginary. So we have five. Then we also have five I root three. So it is it. Five root three, I'm assuming is here. So uh, that is what we are having. When they are both positive, just you know, the angle will be this side. So theta, this is my Z1. So it means that tan theta will be equal to two, five root three out of five. This one will cancel, so it is root three. Ah, uh, and this is going to be uh, tan theta. Okay, theta is going to be tan inverse of root three which is 60 degrees. And because it is making the angle with the positive x axis, so that's what we need. You can as well go ahead to put this angle in radians by getting it as 60 pi over 180, and then you express it to be a third pi, but one may leave it like this. So Z1, which is five plus five I root three, if you express it in polar form, it means that our Z1 will be R, cos theta plus i sine theta from the formula line. So the value of r is 10 into cos 60 degrees plus i sine 60 degrees. And that is the polar form. That is the polar form. Um, I'm doing part C also. I'm letting it to be Z3, because let me assume it is part three. Z3 is Z, negative root three out of two, plus a half I. So if I get the magnitude of Z3, it's going to be, Square root of negative root three over two squared plus a half squared. So this one will give me a three over four plus one over four under root. So this is four over four, which is one, is the square root of one, which is one. So the modulus is one. Then the most important thing, the most important thing is the argument. Which argument should come when you have plotted? Remember the modulus, you've gotten it as one. So the argument, to get the argument, plot. Real axis and it's the imaginary axis. So uh, we had negative root three over two. I'm assuming it's this side. And then the y had a half, negative a half. Zero point five. So the complex number will be plotted as this. Put an arrow. Then, of course, this is angle theta, but we want the angle it makes with the x axis positive x axis. So uh, tan theta is equal to 
a half, which is our y. divided by root three out of two. So it means that theta is tan inverse of a half divided by root three over two. So it was going to be tan inverse of root three. Is it? Is it? This is a half divided by root three over two, which is a half times two over root three. Hey, it is one over root three. So theta is the same as 30 degrees. Okay. But the argument, the argument is this angle. So it is going to be negative 150. We shall subtract from 80, but because of the where it is located in the negative, it will be negative. So the argument of Z3 is going to be negative 150. If you have drawn a poor sketch, or if you have went to draw a sketch, you get a wrong answer. So negative 150, implying that uh, from Z3 is equals to R into cos theta plus i sine theta, our z3 is going to be equal to r, we, got, we had gotten it as one, then cos negative 150 degrees plus i sine negative 150 degrees. So that is how we get the modulus, the, 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 the modulus argument form of that particular case. Very simple. You can as well convert 150 into radians by saying it is 150 pi out of 180. Still, this one will give you the answer. Even if you express it in radians, someone expressed it in radians, here would have zero would go with zero by three, five over six. So it will be five over six pi. So you would say, cos five or six pi plus i sine five or six pi, negative, of course. Okay. Mm. Then from here, I think it's just a matter of getting theta, just a matter of getting theta and the modulus, and then you substitute in this equation. You try the rest of the numbers and check your progress. Um, having gotten or having done all those, having done all those, I'm concluding with the properties of argument. I'm concluding with the properties of the argument. Uh, like though we saw the properties of uh, modulus, so properties of arguments. If we have two complex numbers, Z1, and Z2, the argument of Z1, Z2 is the same as argument of Z1 plus argument of Z2. With arguments, it's as if they behave as logarithms. Okay? It's as if they behave as logarithms. So, uh, we just we just do the product of arguments by adding 
argument of z1 and argument of z2. Then, if it is argument of z1 over z2, is the same as argument of z1 minus argument of z2. These are the properties of arguments. I'm going to illustrate this one with one example. I'm going to illustrate this one with just one example, which we generalize. So my example goes, given that, Z1 is equal to negative one minus I root three. And Z2 is one plus I. Find argument of Z1, Z2 and argument of Z1 over Z2. Now, for this case, first take all you do to get the arguments. We have already looked at how to get these arguments. So for Z1, which is negative one minus I root three, Uh, it would mean that if you plot this, negative one, I root three. So here we have root three. So when you plot this, this is the real, and this is the imaginary axis. So when you plot this, you have to show real axis, imaginary axis. So when you plot this, it's going to come to be this. So we are looking for that value of theta that this complex number is making with the positive x. So if it is this is theta, and then you're coming here, do you mean that tan theta is equal to root three over one. So theta is tan inverse of root three, and this is 60 degrees. So if that is theta, then it means that argument of Z1 is equals to maybe theta one from, from this to the positive X, theta one, which is negative 120. Now, that is how we get argument one. Argument two for Z2. That one, we did it as our first part when we were getting the arguments. So you will sketch and do. You get your argument two, argument of Z2 as 45 degrees. We had already done it when we were starting the arguments. So we have seen that argument of Z1, Z2 is the same as argument of Z1 plus argument of Z2, All right? Add them, negative 120 degrees plus 45, Degrees. So this argument is the same as negative 75 degrees. Then argument of Z1 over Z2, we say that it is the same as argument of Z1 minus argument of Z2. So argument of Z1 is negative 120 minus argument of Z2, which is 45. And this one will go to negative 165. 
So those are the properties of adjoints. All right. Now, uh, today we've covered the following. We've looked at Agan diagram. We've looked at the modulus of a complex number. We've looked at the argument of a complex number. We've looked at how to form, how to transform a complex number from X plus IY into polar form. Okay, so today that was our main achievement. Now, uh, in our next video, we shall be recording the De Mauver's theorem. We shall start from the De Mauver's theorem. For today, or for now, I wish you all the best, guys.